All right. So just recapping from the last presentation's couple of slides. Uh, over here we have the telephone system, which is basically a box that connects uh, outside lines uh, and um, all the internal connections, uh, mostly telephone sets distributed on people's desks, but there are also other peripherals such as uh, night ringers, uh, door stations and other you know things like page interface and so on. So basically this telephone system is a traffic controller uh, that, uh, that directs all the traffic between outside world and the uh, uh, internal um, connections that have to do with a certain facility or business. Uh, so this one here, now we do have that, uh, when you, whenever you are in, in the lab room, uh, we have one of those connected, a slightly bigger one. This, this one is three by eight. Uh, and uh, what does that mean? It has three, in, it, it's a capability of three incoming lines right here. Um, and uh, eight extensions. So this would be installed in a small business scenario here, right? Um, and those are, I keep calling them conventional telephone systems simply because they use, utilize POTS lines uh, to, uh, to connect to the outside world. And over here we have the Amphenol connector or sometimes called uh, RJ21X and the X stands for male or female. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> That 25 pair cable is terminated onto that connector and plugged into the system, and then it's brought out uh, onto the uh, Bix termination strip. Uh, we're going to utilize Bix termination strips, but uh, sometimes you're going to see different platforms uh, as far as um, cross connect um, cross connect fields, and cross connect is basically grabbing the pairs from the system that are connected to the system and cross connecting them to wherever they should go. Um, the, uh, uh, in you know in the facility, right? So usually we connect mostly they're going to be connected to the uh, each and individual telephone sets, and some other things like music on hold or uh, you know there's going to be an audio output for the paging uh, uh, and you know things like that, right? Uh, so uh, here is the thing: the difference between the conventional, as I call them, telephone systems and the VoIP telephone systems is the well, the big main main huge difference is the outside incoming lines right? so with the conventional systems we use pot lines right? which is the regular telephone lines or also known as co lines co stands for central office or sl stands for single line right? so it's a it's the most basic form of a um you know, telephone service that has been provided. Right? Um, now, when it comes to VoIP, when VoIP stands voice over IP, uh, the, the telephone connections are provided in form of broadband. Remember we studied what broadband is? Broadband utilizes frequency division multiplexing. Um, and there could be one... Um, sort of a cable connected to the building and part of that would uh, have a bandwidth designated uh, to service the voice communications would be telephone lines right now when two smart devices connect with each other right? let's say there is a um, what can okay um, Let's say that there is a computer or PC on one side and it is connected to the network and it needs to uh, it connect with a server that's outside or another PC that's inside the building. Let's say it's a server uh, that's somewhere outside of uh, the, 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 the building. So uh, when, uh, uh, when the signal travels from, uh, from that PC, goes through all the network and all the connections and so on and reaches that destination it establishes something that's called a session all right so uh, every time you um, every time you search on google you you, br you you bring google on your screen on your browser your browser sets up a session if you want to search for anything you know um, t-shirts of certain kind or whatever uh, uh, then uh, as soon as that uh, your browser connects with uh, with uh, with the server that's outside it's called establishing a session right? 
And this way, uh, that server communicates with your PC by establishing a session. Any type of connection is called establishing a session. So, um, uh, so the outside lines are in the form of, uh, they, they are superimposed onto the internet signal. So, um, uh, whenever your telephone, when it's a, it's a voice, a vo voice over internet protocol, which is VoIP telephone, uh, that telephone connects to a network through the ethernet cable with the computer cable that we know as cable that we know as computer cable. Uh, and that connects to a, this connected physically to a patch panel and the patch panel uh, on the other side has a tel uh, not telephone but it's a, basically an ethernet patch cable connected to something that's called a switch which uh, basically combines all the uh, computer equipment so all the pcs all the wireless access points all whatever smart devices could be uh, with the climate control of the building including the phones Right, so they all use the Ethernet protocol. Right, so whenever you're dialing a number, uh, that number, that telephone uh, establishes a session with whatever equipment um, is on the other side. Right, so usually there will be a session established between your telephone and another telephone uh, that is um, you know somewhere else. Right? or it would be another equipment that converts the signal into a telephone line on the other side. Right? So that's why those lines, uh, they are virtual lines. There will be one physical connection containing all, the, all those type of signals, and part of that bandwidth, which is you know, uh, frequency spots designated for that, uh, is designated for telephone lines, for telephone communications. And depending on the bandwidth, so uh, um, when you're running regular POTS lines, for every telephone line, you have to bring in a, um, a pair, physical pair of wires. So that's for one telephone line, you get a pair of wires. For two lines, you get two pairs of wires. If you want to add five more lines, you have to connect physically five more pairs. Okay. Now, when it, comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to VoIP or the voice over internet protocol, um, those lines are virtual. Uh, instead of you know, uh, instead of running, having to run additional wires, uh, all that bandwidth is designated, and basically what happens is that those lines are being programmed to exist in there and activated. So they are virtual lines over the internet. Right? So uh, it's so much easier to add five more lines to a facility. Basically, it just involves some programming. Uh, and uh, bang, you got five more lines, and there's some more programming because the system has to be programmed and so on, right? So that's why those telephone lines that are um, uh, that are connecting the VoIP system to the outside world, world they are called SIP lines, S-I-P, and it stands for Session Initiation Protocol. Right? Uh, so basically, it's, I use the word basically it's a lot today, you know, it's uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> so um, uh, in the conventional POTS type of a system, you have physical lines. In the VoIP scenario, you have SIP lines. And SIP lines are virtual, they are channels over the internet signal. And when it comes to the POTS lines, uh, the conventional type of way, uh, you have physical wires being run to. Okay, so. Uh, so as f that's as far as that. Now I'm going to bring up a last uh, uh, last uh, slide from the uh, from the previous session, and we're just going to analyze that. So and we're going to analyze this sort of like a spread out uh, kind of a, a visual here, um, and we're going to put it against uh, how things are connected uh, when we use the VoIP system. Right. So here's the conventional system. And in this one here, this, this, actually this very piece of equipment here, we have connected in our lab. So sometimes when you're there, ask me about it. I'll show you what, uh, you know, what, what, what's connected to what. And this particular box involves RG12 or RG11 jacks to connect to telephone lines. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six CO, line, CO lines that, are, that it can handle. And over here, it has that MFNL connector that can be brought into 
and terminate it on the 25 pair BIX strip. Or it could be 110 termination strip, or it could be something that's called 66 block. Uh, or uh, in UK, it would be Cron, K-O-K-R-O-N-E, right? Uh, so in Canada, we're in Canada, so I'm going to talk about this. Uh, in, uh, most, for the most part, you're going to see BIX. And the next lab after this, uh, we complete this lab, um, uh, lab uh, session, we're going to terminate a 25 pair onto a BIX termination strip. So those are that uh, that uh, those twenty five pairs are being brought and terminated here for the purpose of cross connecting, and sometimes you have the M panel uh, connector or the RJ twenty one uh, Bix cross connect. Uh, you get the uh, uh, M panel connector here, M panel connector here, and that it's already interconnected into that. So you can do it either this way or you can just bring it out and terminate it right onto a strip. There are different ways of uh, skinning the cat. I don't know why would somebody want to skin the cat, but uh, uh, there, that, there goes that saying. All right, so from there, uh, things are being broken out or fanned out onto different things. What can we do here? Well, that, uh, that telephone system can be connected to a voicemail. Right? And so the, so the clients can use the voicemail setup. Uh, it could be connected to something that's called an ATA adapter. An ATA adapter is, it's a liaison type of a box that, uh, uh, that <clears throat> translates the signal from whatever the telephone system wants to see, the type of a signal, onto a POTS line. So different companies, uh, the eight, there's no one universal type of ATA adapter. The a a they ATA adapters, which is analog telephone adapter, they are uh, made uh, by the same company who produces the phone system. That, because that has to be, that it's a proprietary device that works with, with, that, uh, with that telephone system. And whatever the signal is there, it's being translated into a POTS line. On the other side, you can connect regular POTS telephone set, which is the one that you buy in local hardware store, which utilizes POTS line. Or in this case here, I'm just giving you one more example uh, that, uh, uh, that you can uh, connect something that's called a door station. What is a door station? A door station is a faceplate that uh, uh, for the most part uh, consists of some sort of a speaker uh, or, and a microphone, or sometimes the speaker and the microphone are in one. Uh, and there will be a button to press. So when we press the button, that box initializes the telephone conversation, which uh, with whatever telephone set is uh, programmed to initiate. Usually it would be reception, or uh, quite often the door stations are being used in the truck entrances uh, to some big facilities. So when the truck uh, pulls up to the gates, uh, uh, they need to communicate uh, their arrival or whatnot, uh, that they are, they are here to deliver a certain type of goods or whatever it is. Uh, they just come over and then uh, to those gates and those door stations are raised on the poles. So, <coughs> excuse me, the truck driver doesn't have to get out of the truck. He just presses the button uh, and then that initiates the, uh, the, the conversation with that. So there'll be a door station. Another uh, thing that could be connected would be auxiliary ringer. Auxiliary ringer is basically a device that rings and some of them just make noise and some of them flash strobe lights and some of them do both. It depends if there are different companies make different auxiliary ringers. Uh, you know. So uh, where would that be installed? Uh, sometimes it will be installed in um, uh, large facilities in the sup uh, outside of the supervisor's office. Uh, so for example, if the supervisor on the production plant uh, basically walks around and helps people to do whatever they need to do. Uh, and there's a phone call for that supervisor and that person is not in their office because they're just out and about walking, you know, helping people. Uh, so uh, that auxiliary ringing can be programmed to, uh, to be activated when the phone rings in that office. Right? So, that's, uh, so they can see that the phone rings. Okay? And over here we have uh, a bunch of uh, telephone sets also connected through the cross-connect platform. Uh, and these are the proprietary telephone sets. The proprietary is basically made so the signal that telephone is operating on is the signal that's understood by the telephone system. And usually, you know, usually, basically that's what it is. 
here you go. I use the word basically again. Uh, uh, so that uh, that uh, telephone set communicates only with the phone system. You can't plug it into the regular POTS line. Right? If you uh, want, uh, uh, if you want a POTS line connected, POTS like a single line telephone set SLT, and that's basically a telephone that utilizes a single line or a CO line or a POTS line. Uh, you need to go through the ATA adapter, okay? which translates that type of a signal into a POTS line. Now, there is another ATA adapter connected to the cross connect, and it's connected to, uh, it, it acts as a telephone extension. That ATA adapter will have a number programmed uh, onto it, just like the telephone extension. And uh, so is this one here. And with this telephone, once it's connected to the ATA adapter, you can still use pretty much almost all the features that, uh, that are available, which would be uh, out, uh, all call paging or transferring a call or whatnot. Uh, but instead of having buttons that, that are automatically calling up those features, uh, you would have to press certain type of you know, sequence of numbers in order to accomplish those features when it comes to using a regular single line set with the ATA adapter that's connected to the phone system, right? Now, also here is another ATA adapter that is connected to a paging interface. And the paging interface is connected to the amplifier and the amplifier is connected to the paging speakers. Uh, it's just like the one that, uh, uh, the ones that we have connected uh, during lab two, I believe. Right? Now, also you can see here, the CO lines are going one, two, three, five, six, and they're going into this phone system, but there's CO line seven that it connects straight to a single line telephone set, and it's called 911 phone. The idea of 911 phone is, just think about it, this telephone system relies on the power that, uh, that is provided to the facility. So it's plugged into some sort of a power outlet, and uh, then you, if it's powered up, then you can use it. If the power goes down, that telephone system goes down. Right? It's, it's not uh, basically a boat anchor, it's, it's turned off. Uh, what if somebody needs, uh, what if there's a need to make a 911 phone call? You know, somebody falls down, breaks their leg or something like that, you need to call an ambulance or whatever. Uh, things happen, so sometimes you need to call 911. Um, so that, uh, you, would not, you would not be able to use any of those if the power goes down at that moment. So remember when I said to you that uh, those tele pulse telephone lines have uh, independent power? Provided by the uh, provided by the uh, CO central office, uh, so this is battery present. Okay, they have a battery, uh, their own batteries or DC power supplied to it, uh, and uh, on that there's a power and there is a uh, dial tone or voice circuitry connected to it. So if the power goes down in the building. Uh, that telephone line still works because that line has its own power provided straight from the central office. If the central office is not down as power, then you're still okay to use the telephone uh, line. So that 911 set should be bypassing all the equipment. It should be connected straight into the single line telephone set. And that telephone line, uh, the telephone set should be one that does not require power to operate. Uh, now, when it comes to installing 911 phones uh, in large facilities or business facilities, um, every 911 phone should be connected to its own line. You can, you should not um, have multiple telephone sets on one line. Simply because if there is 911 phone in one end of the building and this, this facility is huge, it's somewhere completely else, there's another one that's connected to the same line. What if somebody hangs up it wrong or doesn't hang up properly? That line is going to be offline, so you can't use the other telephone. So uh, every single line telephone set should have its own proprietary, not proprietary, its own designated telephone uh, CO line, right? Uh, so that's as far as connecting the conventional telephone systems. All right, let's jump into the VoIP. Uh, let's jump into the VoIP idea. All right. Let me just bring myself up here. Okay, so VoIP stands for um, 
VoIP stands for Voice over Internet Protocol. So we are not communicating through the uh, we are not communicating through the um, pod lines with the outside world. We're communicating over the internet. Right? Now, uh, some of us uh, are using the VoIP protocol without even knowing it. Uh, some of us might have something that's called a voice, uh, I mean, uh, telephone over internet. So it's you're not having the regular landline, so-called, uh, but you're having a telephone connected to something that's called a phone box or telephone box, which is connected to your router or whatever your internet equipment is, modem, whatnot. Uh, so that so-called telephone box is an ATA adapter. On one side, it has um, on one side it has the uh, Ethernet signal, and on the other side, it has the POTS outlet to which you plug in just a regular telephone that you buy in your hardware store. Mm -hmm. So um, voice over Ethernet, voice over Internet protocol. Uh, that's what VoIP stands for. All right. The concept. What's the concept here? Um, a private branch exchange, which stands for PBX, is a telephone system I, uh, installed locally uh, at a system that serves the, a closed facility, usually a commercial environment such as an office, building, or production plant. What this one says is basically is that PBX stands for private branch exchange, or sometimes it's called KSU, key service unit or key system unit. Um, it's a physical box. Mm -hmm. that uh, acts as a telephone system. Mm -hmm. The purpose of PBX is to provide locally distributed telephone sets to individual clients in a way that this, the end users, which would be the telephone users, they can do the following. They can call each other internally without the need to select outside lines. Uh, can, that's the idea of having telephone extension. If you need to talk to someone who's in the same building and it, both of those, those phones are connected to the same phone system, you just dial their extension. You don't need to select an outside line. Right? Uh, perform audio paging. No. Uh, if you need to, uh, uh, if you need to do an all call page, uh, so and so, please come to the office or so, or whatnot. Uh, then you can uh, perform the audio paging using your telephone sets through that uh, telephone PBX. Right? Uh, the the users can use telephone sets to communicate with the outside world, which is pretty much the original idea of using the telephone. Uh, receive outside uh, calls directed by the outside calls that are received. They could be directed by the reception. It could be a human being, a person sitting at the reception, and direct the phone call. Hi, uh, can I speak to so and so? Yeah, let me transfer you to that person. Right, that thing has, or it could be done by the automated uh, routing system, uh, routing system. So uh, it's just like you know, press one for this person, press two for the other uh, person, and so on. Uh, the end users can uh, use the system designated voicemail. Mm -hmm. Uh, or they can transfer calls to other users. They can use, they can uh, create some or, or, or participate in something that's called a conference calls. A conference call is a telephone conversation that involves more than two end users. There could be uh, five people using the same telephone line and having a conversation. Um, that was kind of pre Zoom time, times. Uh, it was a popular thing to do. It's still being used. Right? Um, so that's the idea of a conference call. Or use the benefit, uh, uh, use the benefit, use and benefit uh, from other locally enabled system features. Yeah. So uh, I just had to throw that in there. And again, this is what the VoIP telephone set looks like, which is basically like a glorified telephone set. Right? All right. Uh, now let's just compare the uh, VoIP vers versus conventional PBX uh, systems. Yeah. In conventional PBX systems, we have locally distributed telephone sets. Well, there are telephone, set, telephone sets on the people's desks. Right? Uh, we have uh, in, you can use we have internal calls within the local facility. Uh, we use conventional CO lines to dial out, and we have a locally installed PBX equipment. Which means basically there's a locally installed physical piece of equipment, physical box that works as a telephone system for that facility. 
Now, let's look at the VoIP. We also have locally distributed telephone sets. That's the idea. Uh, we, have, we can make internal calls within the local facility. And here is the diff big difference here. You can make local calls within other facilities within the common VPN. Because this telephone system is connected to internet, uh, it can be also connected to VPN, which would be a virtual private network, which is a service that uh, reserves some sort of private channels. So here's the idea. When there is a facility here in, let's say we're in London, Ontario, and there is company XYZ, whatever it is, the company name. Right? That company has another branch in Kitchener, Ontario. And it could be having another branch in China. It could be having another branch in Switzerland. It could be having another branch in, in India. Right? Uh, so <clears throat> basically, if all those branches are tapped into the same VPN, uh, then the idea of long distance disappears. Right? Because they're all connected to internet, they're all connected to VPN, virtual private network. And uh, there is no difference between dialing somebody who, said, who sits uh, right beside me or in the next cubicle, in the next room, in the same building, or dialing somebody's office that, uh, that is in a facility in China, for example. Right? Uh, because uh, everything is connected through the same VPN, and that phone call is con considered as an internal phone call. So you just dial the extension, bang, no long distance applied whatsoever. So there's a big money savings when it comes to that. Plus, uh, there's also big money savings uh, aside from long distance uh, charges. Uh, uh, the, right now, to purchase uh, commercially, operated um, telephone line, CO line, it's about in the range of like $100 plus, right? And uh, uh, when it comes to having a one SIP line, which is session initiation, session initiation protocol, which is a virtual telephone line, serves with VoIP, uh, it's about three times less. Right? So it's about $30 so or so. Right. So here's the big thing. Now, if it's a huge company, multi-million dollar company, what's $70 for them? It's like nothing. Yeah, okay. But if there is a branch and that branch has 100 telephone lines, another branch has 100 telephone lines, another branch has 100, tele those things add up. So there's huge money saving when it comes to that. You know? So that and the plus the convenience of not having to use the long distance uh, charges uh, for that. So that's, uh, you know. And then what do we have here? Um, in the conventional, we use POTS lines. Uh, in the VoIP scenario, we use SIP lines to connect, to communicate with the outside world. And now, in, uh, in the conventional PBX, excuse me, we have locally, locally installed equipment. And when it comes to VoIP systems, we have an option. We could have um, locally installed equipment, or we can use hosted routing. The difference between those two is that physical box is a physical box that is installed on site and all the connections run there and that's, you know, that's, that's, that's what happens. So in the VoIP scenario, all the VoIP telephones are connected through Ethernet cable, through the patch panel that's connected to switch and that's part of the network. Okay. Then the PBX, the VoIP PBX, is also connected through Ethernet, connects to the switch. So the whole thing works through the network. Okay. Uh, now, as opposed to conventional, that uh, system that all the telephone lines are physically connected to that telephone box or telephone system. Uh, so um, they also have the option of using hosted routing. What that means is that there are VoIP providers, there are companies that provide, provide VoIP service. One of them uh, is in Montreal somewhere. And when I was in the field, we used, uh, I forgot what the company's name is. They, they keep changing names, but it doesn't matter what the name is, right? Uh, that company provides, it's a VoIP service provider. And they make sales. They contact people and they, make, they, they, they sell the, the VoIP service. So what does that doesn't mean? They have a bunch of servers in there, huge network uh, systems, uh, you know, server rooms, 
and the telephone service is provided by them. So they have the server and they designate, they sell you the uh, VoIP service. So they have a server that works for you in their facility that is connected to the internet and it's tapped into the VPN that you are using as a company. And that's it. Now, the company here, the physical plant or factory or uh, kind of like an office uh, complex or what, whatnot, you also have a VoIP system. The telephones are connected to the, to the uh, network through Ethernet cables. That and, and, and they are basically connect basically they are connected to the VPN. So when you are making a phone call, uh, it works through the network. Um, so it works for, with it works with huge companies, right? So there's a branch in London, there's a branch in Kitchener, there was a branch in Windsor or whatnot. All of those are tapped into the VPN. And that VPN also serves the server that is in Montreal. So now, how the how the telephone conversations are routed are all are routed through that server in Montreal. So if you pick up if I pick up my phone and I want to call my friend who is sitting in the office in China, uh, then uh, I dial their extension that goes tra travels through the internet to that server in Montreal and then uh, is connected to through the internet uh, to the server that uh, is you know, installed on the local network area in that facility in China and their phone rings right? no long distance all right now if I want to call somebody who sits in the next room beside me in the same building or even next cubicle beside me the telephones could be sitting beside each other they're both connected to network I want, to con I want to call that phone. The conversation goes exactly the same way. It connects. Oh, computer wants to update. I'm going to have to postpone that. Anyways, so that uh, the, the, the phone call is uh, connected to the network. The network connects to Montreal. Montreal contacts the same network again, and that phone rings. So it goes through Montreal, <laughs> for example, if that's where it is. Uh, whether I'm calling this phone next to me or I'm calling someone in China, India, Switzerland, Sweden, uh, whatnot. Right? Um, so that's the idea of the of the VoIP here. So local, local, you can you can have locally installed box, uh, and that works mostly for single branches or single buildings uh, that they or they can still use the hosted service right there are different charges apply and so on so sometimes uh, whatever the business uh, transaction is made sometimes it's uh, uh, you know more efficient to do a hosted service or locally installed pbx yeah. uh, and let's look at some of the definitions here uh, pbx we know what that is co line what that is vpn we know what that is sip line we already know what that is pri we haven't touched on that uh, PRI and SIP lines. Uh, SIP lines, uh, session initiation protocol. SIP line is a standard protocol for internet based communication, including telephony, video, messaging, and conferencing. And in this case, we're talking about telephony. All right. And SIP trunking. Trunking makes it possible to connect a PBX to internet, enabling business communications without the use of PRI lines. We'll talk about PRI lines, uh, primary rate interface lines, uh, T1 or E1. Um, T1 is North America and E1 is Europe and India. Um, so let's look at the SIP trunking. What, remember when I was talking about trunking? A trunk is a, like a pipeline or electronic pipeline. Um, in, you know, in, in, in the early days, a trunk would be the trunking would be mostly implemented in the central office locations, telephone providers. There could be a huge central office uh, that services the city, and they would have a multiple lines combined into something that's called a trunk, which is basically a huge cable containing many, many, many cables. Right? So that trunk services that part of the city, and there's another trunk that services that neighborhood, and so on. So that's the idea of trunking. Okay. So the SIP, uh, SIP trunking... Uh, it's basically virtually combining the 
um, the, the virtual telephone lines, right? That we don't need to use PRIs. Uh, before that uh, voice, VoIP was implemented, PRIs or primary rate interfaces were implemented to save on the cabling, right? So PRI, it's a primary rate interface. It's a, it's a one um, communication connection that would consist of two pairs. One is transmit and one is receive, depending on which one is looking. You know, looking one is transmit, one is receive. Um, and that would involve uh, frequency division multiplexing or broadband idea, so that that th those two pairs could have uh, maybe 24, the, the equivalent of t having a 24 um, physical lines. Right? So a modem is required for that. So that, uh, that, uh, that line would be connected from the central office onto the local facility where whatever that is connected to a modem and that modem would decode or demodulate. It would modulate on one side and demodulate, so that's one modem, right? Uh, it would demodulate that and break it into a, into a specific uh, um, equivalent of having so many telephone lines, right? So that's the PRI. And still, you're going to see some of that uh, when you're going to do your service calls. They look like this. Right. For the most part, here's one uh, PRI, here's another PRI. Right. Now, these are the, uh, uh, from the previous slide, previous presentation, this would be the physically provided telephone lines from the outside, and this looks like it's a 100 pair cable, because what do we have here? 25 pairs, 25 pairs, 25 pairs, 25 pairs, all together 100 pairs. Right. So these are the physical POTS lines, but also this huge facility, it also has um, PRI, primary rate interface. So this could be another equivalent of 24 lines, and this could be another equivalent of 24 lines, and that is also connected somewhere to the uh, communication equipment. Right? So, um, uh, so that would be a, a primary rate interface. Let's just take a look at some of that. PRI stands for primary rate interface which would look like this. Uh, and uh, um, it's one physical communication channel, not a line, right? Up to 30 simultaneous phone calls it can handle. I'm talking like Yoda now. Uh, it's an end-to-end -end digital circuit. End-to-end -end means there is a physical cable going from one end to another. One primary, one PRI line consists of two copper pairs. One is transmit, one is receive. Modem is required. Multiplexing is used to carry multiple channels over one well, line, because line consists of two pairs. Right? Uh, each PRI channel gets about 64 kilobits per second. It's, uh, it's capable of um, 64 kilobits per second. Remember, we're talking speed. We're talking, if we're talking speed, we're talking about bits per second. And if we're talking about storage, like on your hard drive, we are talking bytes. And it's not per second because storage is not per second, right? It's a storage, so we're just talking bytes. Right? Just so, uh, just, you know, uh, I know I mentioned that before, but, uh, you know, uh, so PRI, two common types for PRIs. E1 is up to 30 channels, and it's implemented in Europe and in India. And there's also a T1. Um, some, some of the T1s have 24 channels, some of 23 channels, up to 24 channels, and it's implemented in USA in Canada. So uh, sometimes on a service call or uh, when you're in facility, um, uh, in North America, so say, so where is your T1? Or somebody can say, okay, and here's our T1s. Uh, T1 here and T1 here. And there's some information on whatever the specifications on that. Right? So these would be the modems for the T1s. Okay. All right. Now, let's just, uh, let's just, uh, yeah, we got a couple more slides here. Let's just compare the local versus uh, uh, hosted routing when it comes to VoIP service. We've got 10 minutes. We might go over a couple minutes. So uh, if that's the case, uh, if you really have to go, please go after the time. And then you'll be able to, uh, to watch the rest of it uh, once I post it. Okay. Uh, all right. So 
locally versus hosted routing. Local PBX, a physical hardware placed in the facility at hand. Okay, so we talked about that. All telephone connections home run to the cross connect points distributed around the local facility or all telephone sets connect to the computer network when it comes to void uh, and then interface with the local PBX. So all the connect, all the phones connect to network and the PBX connects to network and then the communication happens uh, uh, through the switching system when it comes to the network. All systems, still lock, talking about local, all system connections are connected to the PBX directly or through a computer network. So we just talked about that. Internal calls are routed through the local PBX. So internal calls, basically are the whole telephone traffic is directed by, by that box that's on site. Uh, all outside calls are routed to the CO lines or the SIP lines right? through the local install PBX. Now, how is it routing? No locally installed PBX. Right? All the telephones connect to the network. That's it. Uh, all telephone sets are connected through the computer. Okay, there you go. Uh, all calls are routed through the hosting client, and we went over the idea uh, already. Uh, the hosting client or hardware can be installed locally right, or anywhere in the world. What do I mean locally? It could be in the same city, or it could be that the main, uh, the main PBX is in your building. And that looks and that serves all the branches, right? uh, but usually it's somewhere else. Uh, it's uh, you know there could be a VoIP providing uh, company, but uh, it's somewhere. It could be anywhere in the world because you're using VPN uh, to uh, to make the connections. Connections to the hosting clients are established through VPN, and VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. All connections between end users and uh, sorry, all connections between end users are treated as internal calls, provided that they are within the same VPN. This means that a call between London, Ontario, and Hong Kong is treated as internal call. Doesn't matter whether the, you're calling the phone that's beside you or calling the phone that's anywhere anywhere in the world. So that's the hosted routing. Uh, connections, as opposed to, as opposed to that one here, right? we are having something like this. All telephones, our telephones connect through the ethernet cable to the patch panel. Patch panel is connected to the switch. And the switch is connected to the router, router or um, or um, whatever else the um, local area network equipment would be, and that's pretty much it. Anything that connects to that goes through the Ethernet cable. Right? Um, how do you do pages? Right, because sometimes when you switch over from the local uh, from the conventional system, the huge company can uh, can be converted to VoIP. It's, a, it's the next hottest thing that right now that's still keep going. Uh, a lot of companies are switching from a regular phone system to VoIP to save money. Uh, well, if you want, because sometimes you want to do a page. Well, how do you connect the paging equipment right now? Because there's, uh, if it's a hosted system, there is no local piece of equipment. Where do you connect the amplifier? Where do you connect the amplifier to? Well, here's the idea of a paging interface. Paging interfaces are being produced by different companies around the world. Uh, Bogan is one of them. Um, but they have the parts input. Where do you connect that? Well, you're connected to the ATA. Well, then the company who produces those VoIP telephones, whatever the company is, they also will have ATAs that are made for their system. So you plug in the, the paging interface, which is connected to the paging speakers, and the ports line, 
uh, through the POTS line here. Then the other side of that ATA adapter would have Ethernet connector and it plugs into the network as well. And it has pretty much the same, almost the same circuitry as the VoIP telephone system. It understands the Ethernet signal and so on. So basically on the other, basically, on the other side of the ATA, you can connect just a regular POTS telephone and that ATA adapter could have programmed, could have um, telephone extension number that is programmed into it. So if you connect, if you dial that extension number that the ATA has, the ATA is going to respond and that single line set is going to ring. So that's a very popular thing to, in the lobbies, for example, if, uh, if you don't want to have the big expensive telephone sitting in the lobby that people are coming in, it's a controlled entry, uh, you, could, uh, you could implement that ATA adapter somewhere in the equipment room uh, and then you just run the POTS line to the lobby so somebody can pick it up and call the reception. Okay. Uh, also, the ATA adapters, uh, same, in the same way, uh, can be implemented to, 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 uh, to have the door stations that could be, uh, for example, at the truck, truck entry um, um, gates. Right? Uh, so, uh, so that's that's how the uh, that's how the system is also solved, right? So the ATA adapter is a very popular thing. Right? Now, uh, one thing I'm going to mention that uh, uh, because of the POTS specifications, right? The POTS line sits at 48 volts DC, so it should have the 48 volts DC at the other side of the ATA adapter. And in, in, in order to, for, for the phone to ring, you have to have 90 volts peak to peak. It's actually, um, it's actually uh, 90 volts, uh, uh, 48, 48 volts or 45 volts or 48, something like that, close to that. It has to have minimum 90 volts. And how is it accomplished is that uh, DC 40 volts is being reversed uh, at the frequency of 20 hertz. And that is that gives you the peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, 90 volts, um, 90 volts. Yeah. So uh, some sources are going to give you 90 volts DC, but in reality, it's that. Now, um, uh, I used to have a problem once in one of the big facilities that the paging interface would not respond to the uh, to the um, to the signal being sent. So the paging interface was installed, and there would be ATA adapter. And uh, if somebody wants to call the, do the all call page, they would dial the extension of the ATA adapter. That ATA adapter should be ringing on the other side. That would, the ringing tone would be picked up by the paging interface. The paging interface would react to that ringing tone, pick up automatically and react whichever way it's supposed to react. Um, uh, so uh, you could uh, give you a, it could give you a confirmation tone, so you could speak right away, or it could be programmed to give you a confirmation tone. After which you would have to press the zone uh, number one, two, three for different zones. And for the purpose of zoning is that uh, it could be shipping and receiving, could be a production hall, could be the offices. They could be put on different zones. So the pages, not everybody in receives all the pages so if there's a specific page that's supposed to be uh, directed at the shipping the receiving department the offices don't have to hear that so uh, you know so it's the kind of becomes less annoying right um, so uh, what the problem was is that uh, <clears throat> uh, the company who was ser selling the service uh, they have uh, connected that uh, whole system just to make sure at their facility and uh, but but it between them setting it up, designing the system, and by the time the system was installed, the company came up, uh, the, 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 um, the phone system company, they came up with a different model, like upgraded model of the thing. They would look the same and everything. And I was trying to make it work, trying to make it work, trying, everything was connected. We went over the connections. We went just to make sure that nothing was misconnected uh, and this thing wouldn't work. Uh, it just so happened that uh, that uh, the 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 ringing uh, the ringing signal was not strong enough for the um, uh, for the um, paging interface to pick up. So we had to uh, go and uh, uh, get the older number and place it there, so the paging interface could. Also. So sometimes you're going to have some weird or um, or interesting challenges when it comes to do service calls. This is one of them, and now you know. Um, all right. Yeah. Th thank you, Jared. Uh, so um, yeah, so then uh, just a couple more slides here. 
uh, yeah, two more slides, three more slides. And the third one is basically, we already talked about it, right? So uh, I'm just going to give you uh, one more slide here. Connections, topology of connection, connecting the VoIP telephone systems. You could have it in a dedicated service, or you can have it, well, service connection, uh, or you can have an inline connection. Right? Uh, normally, if you want, uh, because uh, the telephone, VoIP telephone set, utilizes Ethernet connection, which is basically a computer wire. Right? It connects to the computer jack. Right? And in the office, there's another computer jack that connects the computer to it. Right? So yeah, that would be an okay scenario, no problem. Right? And that's probably the best scenario. However, uh, the companies who, have, who are producing the VoIP telephone systems, they want to make as many cells as possible. And how do you make as many cells as possible? Well, if your system uh, is versatile. If the system can handle different kinds of situations, if the system is easy to install without too much of this disruption in service when somebody wants to switch from whatever they had and buy the system that you are uh, selling, right? So, um, uh, so what happens is that, well, uh, sometimes uh, in an office, there's only one computer jack, right? Well, if that's the case, then you would have to run another computer wire or an Ethernet wire and install it. And if you have 20 offices, then you know the client might think, I don't know, I'm just gonna have to deal with all that stuff. People are gonna come here and who's gonna have money for that one? Well, uh, they have solved that problem to put, uh, so you could put that telephone set in line with the already existing connection. Okay? So uh, the telephone set would have an input Ethernet jack and output Ethernet jack, and they are labeled to the network and they are labeled to PC, right? So what you can put that, you can disconnect the computer from the main jack here, put that telephone in line, and there you go. Uh, so you have uh, the telephone is going to utilize the Ethernet connection and uh, grab the telephone signal, and the PC is still going to. So basically, you see no difference in operability of the equipment. You know? Uh, so, um, so uh, what, uh, what happens is that you can see that scenario in different um, department stores. Um, Home Depot is very popular for that. So all the cash registers are basically PCs. And you're going to see a big telephone set, telephone set right there. And you're going to see that thing connected. Uh, uh, and that, is, that telephone set is connected to the network jack. And in line, it is also with the cash register, which is basically a PC. And that's how things look like on, on the other side. You can plug in, because those telephone sets utilize power. So there are two ways you can, you can use that. You can have an AC adapter or, or, or a power adapter that you plug into the power outlet, into the telephone, and you plug into the wall. So it makes the telephone operational. Right? Or you can use the PoE. PoE is power over Ethernet. Right? It's a very, very nifty idea because the Ethernet cable provides not only the signal uh, for the signal protocol, but it also has power included in, 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 in that cable. Right? So then you don't need to use the power adapter. You can you could just plug in that uh, uh, Ethernet cable and the power that is included because it's PoE, it stands for power over Ethernet, is going to power up the phone, providing that the switch, because you have the cable connected to the patch panel and patch panel is connected to a specific port in something that's called a switch. That port in the switch has to be PoE enabled or PoE capable. There are switches that have only the signal, and there are switches that those ports are PoE. Right? So, of course, the PoE switches are more expensive than the regular switches. Uh, but uh, but when uh, when installing uh, the um, VoIP telephone systems in whatever the facilities you're going to be installing, you have to make sure that the switches are PoE enabled or PoE com uh, compatible. Right? And here is what we have already talked about. 
how do you connect the paging system onto a VoIP system since you have no, if it's a hosted system, so do you, there is no physical box in the equipment. So here's the patch panel. The patch panel has Ethernet connection to which the ATA adapter is plugged in. That is connected on the other side. It has, on one side, it has the Ethernet signal. On the other output, it has the POTS, uh, POTS protocol, which is the uh, plain old telephone service. It is understood by the paging interface, and the paging interfaces could be different. Uh, they work, into, but they, for the most part, they are operating on the POTS input. Just so some kind of consistency all across the board is established. And that connects to the amplifier, and from the amplifier it goes to the to the paging speakers. Now the paging interfaces could be that uh, on the output you could have one pods input here, which is the main communication channel between the it and the pay, and the ATA adapter, uh, and you could have multiple in, uh, outputs that are connected to multiple amplifiers, and those amplifiers could be connected to the multiple networks of speakers that could be installed according to the zones, or you could have the zones connected to the not to the amplifier, but you'd be connected, connecting those uh, speaker lines, the audio lines, to the paging interface, various outputs. And also the amplifier would be connected to the paging interface. And the paging interface would direct the routing to which zones to turn on, uh, depending on your selection. So that's, uh, uh, that's the idea of that. And here are some suggested video links. Uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to go through some of them. Um, the more you watch, the more you uh, arm yourself with knowledge, the better you're going to be when it comes to uh, uh, your employability. All right. So that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it um, uh, when it comes to today's lesson. We have gone over about five minutes or six minutes, uh, and I'm going to post that so uh, whoever has left will be able to uh, to watch the ending of that. Okay. So uh, I have a class at two. And uh, I will see you guys when I see you. And have a great reading week. Uh, so basically it's like a March break that's in February. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.